in this video we are going to discuss about cross correlation in starting correlation topic also we discussed about cross correlation here we are going to discuss clearly what is meant by cross correlation how many equations we are having for cross correlation according to the signal so that means if signal is complex how many equations we can use for cross correlation function if signal is real how many equations we can use uh, to calculate cross correlation function you will observe here so now here it is the measure of similarity if you had correlation correlation is nothing but measuring the similarity between two signals if that two signals is signal and its same delayed version then that is called as autocorrelation function if you are measuring the similarity between the signal one signal and time delayed version of another signal then that is called as cross correlation if you are measuring similarity between a signal and its time delayed version for the same signal so then that is autocorrelation if you are measuring similarity between a signal and time delayed version of any other signal then that is called as cross correlation now consider two general complex signals x1 of t and x2 of t then you can write your cross correlation function as r1 of r12 of tau so the correlation of first signal with second signal so this is you can represent your cross correlation function either like r12 or r21 that means so correlation of first function with second function correlation of second function with first function if your signal is complex you are having different equations for this that means if your signal is complex then definitely when they are asking uh, correlation of first function with second function every time you need to go for complex conjugate of second function only for example if they are asking what is the correlation of cross correlation of second function with first function that with function so you need to consider complex conjugate with first function so that's why i consider complex conjugate of first function in both the cases whatever it may be you can see this is like general correlation equation which we had already uh, for autocorrelation function so here this is for cross correlation the first equation is equivalent to r12 of tau that means correlation of first function with the second function that means i'm measuring similarity with first function with second function by taking the reference of first function with second function so here integral minus inf infinity to infinity x1 of t for x2 we need to consider complex conjugate and we need to sh take shift this shift you can use for this signal or this signal that means in any correlation equation you need to check the signal for the time delayed version of other signal so that's why you can consider this shift for this signal or this signal that is your wish but when you are calculating the cross correlation function for first signal with second signal then you need to consider complex conjugate of second function so here x1 of t x2 star of t minus tau dt1 uh, equation you can write to calculate cross correlation function or you can take shift for first function and you can consider just complex conjugate of second function and you can calculate this is r12 of tau similarly you are having r21 of tau this is cross correlation of second function with first function that means measure of similarity of second function with first function so here that is equivalent to minus infinity to infinity as we are considering the similarity with first function i am considering complex conjugate for first function so here x1 star of t x2 of t minus tau dt as i told you you can consider this shift of the signal either for first or second so whatever shift you consider so that shift must be there in correlation function why because so correlation itself the meaning of taking measure of similarity between a signal and time delayed version of another signal so here you can take the shift and you can use star for this and x2 of t dt like this these four equations you can use for calculating uh, cross correlation function of any signal so r12 of tau you can use these two equation either of these two equations for r21 of tau you can use 
these two equations all these four are called as our cross correlation function equations now coming to real signal if your signal is real then you are asked to find out what is the cross correlation function then also indicated with r12 of tau r21 of tau then r12 and r21 uh, may have same equations you no need to consider that complex conjugate that's it you are going to get real signal equations if you are taking out that complex conjugate in these equations then you are going to get your real signal equations that means minus infinity to infinity x1 of t and x2 of t minus tau dt will be one equation if you consider shift to first function that will be another equation x1 of t minus tau x2 of t dt this will be another equation so here also if you uh, if you are not considering that complex conjugate you are going to get the same equations for r21 you can see x1 of t x2 of t minus tau dt this equation and x1 of t minus tau x2 of t dt this equation so in case of real signal you are having only four uh, two equations for calculating cross correlation function that means just you need to shift the time shift for first and second signals so here the shift is for second and here the shift is for first signal so here generally we will take this equation for r21 and we will take this equation for r12 in case of real signal so now this is about cross correlation function and one important point is for example your cross correlation function r21 of tau or r12 of tau whatever it may be if this is equivalent to 0 then that two signals are said to be orthogonal if this autocorrelation function is equivalent to 0 then two signals are said to be orthogonal so how we can say that two signals are orthogonal if cross correlation function if these are the equations for cross correlation function if you are getting any value any finite value then you can say there is a uh, some measure of similarity between those signals here correlation is nothing but you are just comparing the signals and you are observing the similarity between the signals if you are having similarity then definitely you will get some finite value measuring that similarity so here if you are not getting any measure of similarity then if you are getting zero then that is said to be that two signals are said to be orthogonal and there is no measure of similarity between those two signals for example if your signals are like this like this there may be some measure of similarity between those two signals but whenever signals are opposite orthogonal definitely there won't be measure of similarity between those two signals then you you just consider that as orthogonal signals so you can say those two signals are said to be orthogonal so here this is about cross correlation function in next class we'll see properties of cross correlation function so generally these, these are used for energy signal uh, in future classes we will go for power signal also generally these whatever general equations under cross correlation function all these are for energy signals so in future classes we are going to deal with cross correlation function of power signal also i will give that uh, that formulas also uh, here the equation difference may be like this one, limit t tending to infinity 1 by t we just put for power signal i will give in an, another class cross correlation function of power signal you can treat this general cross correlation function equations for energy signals and in later classes we are going to discuss for power signal this is about uh, fundamentals of cross correlation function